what a setting, what an interesting uh, topic to speak on. Uh, when I was told the topic is the empowered self, I was like, this, this, is a, this is a very broad topic. This is what it is all about. And um, um, it also is very close to home because uh, that's what I do. Healthcare, as I see it, is the fundamental building block of the empowered self. I think uh, for one to feel empowered, one needs to be physically, mentally, emotionally fit. And um, uh, where I spend my time, it's, it's very, very interesting to see how the world is moving um, so fast. And it's at the intersection of technology and healthcare that we are seeing um, a big change coming. So I thought I'll use this opportunity today to take you through the, um, what is happening in the world around us and uh, what all can be done. So the topic uh, is basically how healthcare is changing with technology, data, digital health, and how that is uh, going to empower us like never before. That's what I'm going to talk about. So today, what does healthcare look like? What is this picture really about? It's a picture of helplessness. It's the worst feeling a human can go through when they feel they are at the mercy of something, when they are not in control, very, very far from, we are very far from the empowered self. We are, when we are in that situation, we are clearly not um, in control. Now, what is an empowered self? It is physic physically, mentally, emotionally, as I said, fitness. There has to be um, fitness uh, to actually do things that you need to, you want to, and you aspire to. You need to be aware, where are you right now? The quantified self, the, that's an entire movement that will just tell, that is telling people that right now you are here and you are headed in this direction. This is the trajectory you would be on. And um, uh, the last part, very important, is proactive. Can you control your destiny? Can you control that and influence that trajectory? And that's, that's where technology is coming in very, very fundamental way. Today, when we say we manage our health, what does it really imply? Um, it's, it's very reactive. When you feel sick, you look for health care. When you are OK, uh, you assume that the trajectory is in the right direction, which is not. Uh, but it is very, very reactive. The other thing is it's largely cosmetic. Um, a person is said to have a healthy lifestyle if the person is working towards weight loss. And that's kind of. Uh, the primary objective agenda, and, and, and healthcare is a lot more uh, holistic and comprehensive. Lastly, it's the fads come every season. We have seen so many of them. And um, uh, that's kind of, we do these three things, we feel we are taking care of our health. Um, and, and it's not really um, what is fundamentally what needs to happen. Now, what's fundamental? That's, uh, you've heard this word so many times already from me. Now, um, healthcare is in a very unique situation. It's, it's one of those industries that has suffered from lack of imagination for the longest time. And um, uh, what I mean by this is we keep reinventing the wheels all over again. And uh, think about um, what a doctor does. Um, a doctor run, uh, learns certain set of protocols in medical school, and then on top of that builds a huge layer of pattern recognition. As they see more and more patients, they keep getting better with age, they get better with experience, and then when the doctor is gone, you're back to zero. The next doctor is again starting the learning curve again and again. No other industry pretty much has that kind of a situation where the, there is no compounding or incremental. It is, a doctor goes like this, an apprentice would learn a little bit, but till you do it yourself, there is no continuous growth. So the reinvention of the wheel has hampered this sector for the longest time where we are just not able to build on the, on one, the historic success already achieved. So there would be, you would find in the 90s, there would be, or say 80s, there would be better physicians, better endocrinologists, better this, better that. 30, 50 years, no other industry has that situation where giant leaps have not been made. But healthcare suffers from that. Uh, the other thing here is doctors are busy 
but they're doing again the same thing o all over again same old same old there's no innovation that we have seen in the core process of a, a doctor patient experience 100 years back also the patient will go tell the doctor that these are the three things that i uh, can see wrong with myself doctor will ask a few questions there would be a diagnosis um, and that process happens today also that happened yesterday um, and again what that fundamentally means is there's no productivity gain that has happened in that interaction um, as a result of which that it's it's too very expensive and hard to become a doctor but you can still see only the same 20 40 50 patients that you see in a day um, and uh, it's it's uh, one of those reasons where the only way they can crunch um, or, or rather increase their monetization is by seeing more and more and more patients uh, where quality takes a back seat um, we are facing that fundamental issue also in this specific sector and uh, it's uh, it's very core to this sector now uh, last part it's you are at the mercy of a system the consumer is not in control and and when we talk about the empowered self that's where we are at the the biggest gap that you an empowered self is a self in control here the system decides what needs to happen with the with the helpless consumer there's hit and trial that happen on you you don't even know what's going on um, and then at the end of it um, you, you get lucky or sometimes you don't and um, so now this paints a grim picture I understand but I think that this presents one of the biggest opportunities and biggest changes that we are seeing in world today because there's uh, the fundamental change that is happening is that the tech uh, that technology has come in computational science has advanced to a very significant degree we are moving into a world where healthcare is becoming more and more personalized preventative predictive and I'll tell you how that happens now this say the doctor patient interaction um, this interaction has followed a certain paradigm but the b building block as I explained is exactly what it was set of rules set of protocols every year some protocols get discarded new protocols come in and then a layer of pattern recognition with artificial intelligence deep sciences machine learning those patterns can be understood now a lot and lot better um, the little m computers today can have access to patterns across literally thousands of doctors and millions of patients and can start building out the the pace of diagnosis which very soon will um, beat or complement the kind of diagnosis that a doctor can uh, achieve now I'm not saying this needs to replace the doctor actually this gives the doctor a lot more time to do the more important thing that they need to do which is comforting counseling and guiding the patient how to manage his or her condition they should not be spending so much time on things that technology can do the diagnosis the writing the prescriptions the figuring out the same thing over and uh, over again and another thing that is very very I think um, critical here is from a patient's perspective everyone feels that I'm getting a very personal touch by having that conversation again and again from the doctor's perspective you are like the previous 50 patients who came in with the same condition because this is fever season everyone is every second person is walking in with the same and walking out with the same prescription now you really need to let a lot of that mechanical work move on to technology and technology is capable now it is strong now it is able to process not only based on the protocols because the biggest problem has been protocols have always been there but this, it's a multivariate system where there are so many data points so many in, in, uh, entry points and inputs that can go into that model and then starts the, the churn of the, the patterns when you see when you see doctors respond differently how would a human mind respond to it that's what artificial intelligence does it understands that pattern and that's where we are seeing very very key work happen across the world and uh, uh, it's happening in India uh, it's happening in China it's happening in the US it's happening in UK um, this is coming faster than one would imagine and I think it's it's going to make healthcare so much better predictable and data driven the other thing is 
personalized a person's history and personal condition based right now we have healthcare which is very much one size fits all this is the the way it should work for everybody now the reality is everybody's condition everybody's um, genetics everybody's body structures everyone everyone's uh, current data and historical trajectory have been different their risks are different their needs are different and te what technology does is does that individual linear mapping that you in your tra trajectory are moving in this direction and this is the intervention you need overlay that with an understanding of millions of patients who have uh, who the system has seen like you who were in this kind of a condition at this point these were the specific interventions that made them look uh, go down go up go sideways whatever these this is the kind of thing you do so five years later if you look at your personal health app that app should be able to tell you these are the th three things you need to care about today do this this and this and you will continue living well you'll continue living healthy happily um, and then it's the empowerment is certainly there's a big pyramid but at the base of it is you it's it's impossible to be empowered unless you are in control of your physical and mental well-being so you really need to be fit and disease free so that's where healthcare 2.0 as uh, we call it is it is personalized it is for you it is every individual gets a tailored healthcare experience your app tomorrow five years later you see will be completely different from what the person next to you sees it will be based on your trajectory your genetics uh, your uh, data iot is changing how we access data genetics is changing how we uh, understand trajectories all of this is is uh, is what we are seeing going on in the system it will become more and more predictive you are headed into this abyss this needs an intervention right now it is scientific um, I think already uh, most of the wh whether you see the IBM Watson examples or a lot of AI examples uh, at our end we are also developing a bunch of AI models for uh, healthcare it's not easy uh, it's not too hard to be beat the average doctor anymore in diagnosis and I think the idea is not to beat any doctor it is to assist that doctor to be better and that is a fundamental thing that we need to uh, make sure we are uh, working towards that the same doctor can focus on so much more value add if only that person had the time and um, capacity to really do that which in today's stretched environment doesn't look likely um, it is also very critical for a country like India I think um, the projected gap between uh, the number of doctors and that we need and we have is somewhere around like we need I think around three million doctors to meet the needs of our citizens as of now um, we have around 800,000 doctors today so we are literally in a situation there where we are 70 percent short and it takes five years seven years for a doctor to get trained there's no way it's not even a, a practically impossible even theoretically a construct will not get you there that in any foreseeable future we'll have th that number of doctors what we need to s uh, make happen is the same doctors should be more productive handling 10 times the number of patients that they could and that is the promise of technology that is where the technology takes empowerment across the board actually to the masses that is the consumer we really need to empower we need to make sure that the average consumer and it takes a lot of deep technology um, to create systems that work at the bottom of the pyramid but that is the I think the fundamental um, um, disruption we are seeing that is the joy of the space that I work in that this this is a reality this is a possibility we will see in our lifetime that this consumer will feel empowered or at least have the physical and mental well-being taken care of so that can work on more productive areas of life thank you